Hari ini kita ada dengan foundernya Center Coffee, Sang Ho. Sang Ho, thanks for joining us. No worries. Can you please uh, introduce a little bit about yourself and Center Coffee and where you guys started? So, my name is Sang Ho Park. I am the owner of Center Coffee. Um, we're based in Seoul and we're open from 2017. Um, here, our first location is in Seoul Forest. And then currently we have five shops all around Seoul. Um, and yeah, we started in Seoul primarily to open a brand that serves great coffee and especially some high-end varietals at Geisha that can be uh, available anytime you come. So from that point till now, we're still serving, trying to find and serve great coffee, great Geishas or other rare varietals to the public in Seoul. Uh, I remember um, you actually spent a long time in the UK yeah. with uh, Square Mile, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Mm. Uh, how was your experience working in coffee in the UK and what are the differences you saw between uh, the coffee industry in the UK and, and in Korea, for instance? Yeah, so I had the pleasure to work with a great company like Square Mile and you know, to work with James Hoffman and Annette, who was the co-owner at that time. And to at the at the time when I was working in London, that was when specialty coffee scene was blowing up. So it was great to be part of the place where coffee itself was very very blowing up. Um, special coffee was really um, a lot of people getting excited about it. So to work in a company that supplies all the cafe, most of the cafes in London, and to work at the roastery. I got to see um, how the cafe operation and roastery operation actually worked and how important you know, sourcing good green coffee was and how roasting was important to, for the cafe to succeed. Um, but then when I came to Korea, it's a completely different market. So people in Korea mostly, um, you would see when you go around Korea, um, a lot of the cafes would roast as well. So retail or and wholesale businesses aren't separate. So it's right. mostly just as one. <coughs> Whereas in the UK, you'd have a roastery business and um, retail business will be different. completely different. So mostly the roastery business would, you know, do wholesale yep. and do machines, etc., to help the cafes. But um, in Korea, I don't know what it is, but mm. people just. Want to, do want to roast yeah. themselves. They want to roast, they want to do the cafe, they want to do everything. Yeah. So I thought when I, when I was coming into Korea, um, I wanted to initially do a roastery business. Right. Um, but then I saw the environment was that, okay, if I open a roastery business here, yeah. it won't work. It'd be like, tough. Yeah, yeah. it would be really tough um, to persuade these people to okay, buy what you're doing is wrong <laughs> I'm gonna do it better for you but you have to pay me you know right like, so that didn't really yeah that didn't when I, when I came here to kind of suss out the market yeah and I, I asked people about the business that I was gonna do they were like no it won't work like mm. they, they won't they because I don't know I don't know what you use the word control freak but everyone in Korea seems to be like if, the, if it's out of their hand, they get really anxious, like, yeah, yeah, anxious or like, like yeah. paranoid. Yeah, and if, if they feel something's wrong, yeah. you know, a lot of Asian people, they don't, they don't want to talk about negative right. things, you know? So they find it really hard. So they want to actually have hands on everything that they yeah. do in the cafe operation. So that's very interesting though because yeah. that's uh, something similar right now that's happening in Indonesia yeah. now because we we run a wholesale and a retail mm. business from the very beginning mm. and now we've seen more and more micro roasteries yeah. right uh, maybe before uh, people started out with having a retail business uh, and then running the retail business in a in a consistent way mm. But then even and, and then buying coffee from say you know a, a branded roaster or a roaster with reputation, yeah. but eventually they end up wanting to explore that area or yeah, venue yeah, yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. And then it's not like us as a as a as a, a fellow specialty coffee you know uh, mm. enthusiast can say oh you know don't right you know what I mean. Sometimes I feel like 
uh, people eventually want to learn more. Yeah. You know, once they get, they feel like they can master one side of the specialty coffee, mm -hmm. they want to explore yeah, yeah. the other part, yeah, right? Sure, Which yeah. is, it, in terms of like uh, coffee geekiness, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But in terms of business, yeah. incredibly... Uh, Difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people realize it's I know I know you you know when we all start as in the in the coffee industry we all mostly we all start as a barista so yeah. we want to hone our craft into making great coffee and you know we, we fiddle around with BTS and right. you know refractometers and yeah. etc and then you feel like okay now as a barista I'm more competent. Yeah. But now I want to do roasting as well. Yeah. And then when they go into business, they feel like they need to do that to, they feel like it will be better than other people if I do it. Right, know? like some sort of competitive advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you soon realize that the amount of money that goes into do a cafe and also do a roastery, because you need to not only buy the machine and yep. extra space yeah. and Green coffee. Green coffee. And we po probably would need to hire someone yeah. to, to manage the cafe as well. Right. So, so the amount of money that goes into start a cafe roastery, and then they don't really think about how much money do I need to make as a revenue to make this a sustainable business, you know? So not only sustainable, but I think a lot of people forget that if you're just if your revenue is allowing you to just sustain, yeah, that's not a successful business. No. you know, you need no. to be making profit. You need to be profitable to you know, to actually grow and yes. do more exciting stuff. Exactly. Can you tell me why 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 has black coffee always been uh, popular in Korea in terms of or you know it's that that habit's origin and. And, uh, and and how it's evolved to today. Right, so the Korean coffee culture was actually, there was a heavy influence from Japan. So, because um, Korea was colonized by um, Japan for periods of time, um, the coffee culture actually came from Japan. So if you look at old school Japanese um, coffee shops, they do um, cloth filters. Um, right. And they would do, I mean, like, yeah, so, like, black coffee was the one that got, it, got imported into Korea. So that, that um, culture of drinking black coffee was heavily kind of imprinted from way back then. So I think that's why, because of the influence, mm -hmm. um, Korean people find it more... Um, when, when they think of coffee, they wouldn't think of like latte. They would actually think of just black coffee. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why people drinking Americano um, filter coffee is a little bit more, that for them it's more familiar. Mm. So, so, you know, like when specialty coffee scene was growing in Korea um, and when a lot of the cafes was introducing flat white. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back in Australia or in Europe or Indonesia, that would be like Everyone. That's the basic know, drink, yeah. right? They yeah. Would, they would drink, but in Korea, it's a new drink. Mm. So they they would need to. I, we would need to explain, yeah, 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 right, to and sort of why why you would need to pay more for a shorter milk uh, drink, you know, like. I see. So that's why. So it was quite different. So it's a different market where they would they prefer black coffee, um, but now when you like, so we've been open for now eight or eight year. Yeah. If you look at a typical Korean cafe revenue, like 50% will be Americano. Right. And 20% um, 20, 20 would be filters. And then lattes would be only like 10, 15%. Wow. So Amazing. that's why, yeah. So, <laughs> so but that's a big increase from compared to eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so mm. no one really drank lattes. At all. And all, oh, wow. also, I think this has a, this is a factor that takes into why um, because 80% of Korean population is lactose intolerant. Uh, they just didn't grow up with it. Yeah, right? yeah. But, but that's such an Asian thing, yeah, you know? Yeah, like yeah. Indonesia is the same. Yeah, yeah. Like right now, they, they love like like milky, creamy drinks, uh -huh. but they're lactose intolerant. That's yeah. why in Indo right now, like, oat, like oh, alternative yeah, yeah. milks is like yeah. Yeah, 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 huge, yeah. huge. In Korea now, now there are a lot of the alternative yeah. milk 
um, options like oat milk, yep. almond milk. Right. Like recently, bonsoi came into Korea, uh, um, but people are they're, still they're, they're they, not, don't, they don't they yeah. understand. They right. don't. They don't. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they're just like. ASMR. In, in the summer, like hot days, ice americano, ice filter. All day long. All day, all day long. Yeah. That's awesome. That's uh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that until until uh, so I'm here talking to you, man, and like uh, exploring the the looking at the coffee culture around and see what people are, are buying as well. Mm. I didn't really realize that until until this trip, actually. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Well, thanks, Sang Ho. Appreciate your time and the right. chat. Um, you know, I think uh, a lot of our followers are very, very interested in uh, basically Korean culture. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, right now, Korean culture, especially in Indonesia, mm. has been massive, right? right. With all, all of the K drama mm -hmm. and, and the music, music and everything. Yeah. So, um, a lot. We, I'm sure in the recent years, you've gotten a lot of more Indonesian tourists as yeah, well yeah, coming yeah. into Korea, yeah. wanting to experience the culture, and I think. Uh, the coffee culture in Seoul is definitely something that they love to experience mm -hmm. as well. Anywho, um, appreciate your time, man. Again, uh, right. thank you so much for, for uh, uh, letting us come over here and do a little bit of uh, interviewing and videoing. Um, looking forward to see you sometime maybe in Indo or Jakarta. We'd yeah, love yeah. to have for you. Sure, for sure, for uh, sure. Thank you so much. No worries. Okay guys, jadi itu dari uh, dikit tentang coffee culture di, uh, uh, di Seoul, di Korea sama Sangho Park. Ntar uh, besoknya kita akan ke salah satu kafe uh, brand yang juga uh, sangat terkenal di Seoul. Oke, okay, bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.